Welcome to the Heart of Hospitality podcast hosted by Duncan O'Rourke, CEO, Accor Northern Europe. Hospitality matters because it has heart. In this series, we'll be speaking to our guests to celebrate the moments and lives that make this sector so special and to spotlight the true heart of hospitality, people. In this episode, Duncan speaks to Yolanda Zadniziani, the general manager of the Inc Hotel in Amsterdam. They discuss her personal experiences of being a female leader in hospitality, the importance of championing a diverse workforce and why teamwork is paramount to success. Um, good afternoon, good uh, morning, good evening, depending where you are. It's an absolute pleasure uh, again to be doing this podcast. Um, very, very good uh, feedback we've had so far. And it just shows you how important it is to listen to these experiences of these wonderful ambassadors of our industry and I wish and hope everybody settled into 2022 um, very well, safe and, and, and well, and, and all your dreams are coming true. And with me, I'm super happy because uh, I get a chance to speak to Yolanda. Uh, uh, Yolanda is uh, working right now in Amsterdam at our Inc Hotel there, but uh, has tremendous, tremendous experience. I've, I know Yolanda well. Yolanda, an absolute pleasure. Lovely to have you on this. And thank you for taking the time to also contribute to this. Well, good afternoon, Duncan. Thank you for having me. And um, yeah, I'm excited to be part of this uh, project. And I always wonder what I'm going to um, be like when I hear myself back. So that's a bit the nervous part. Yeah, and it's going to be fantastic because you have such a wonderful story uh, to tell Yolanda. Um, you've, you know, you've, you've, you've been a general manager in many, many extraordinary locations, great hotels. In fact, you were the first female general manager in three hotels in Morocco and Mauritius. Um, but before that, you know, you've been in this uh, industry for 27 years. Did you get into hospitality by choice or was it by accident? Well, I was born in hospitality, mm. uh, but it was not my choice afterwards. Um, I'm in the hospitality business uh, working for 44 years now, and I moved 27 times in different countries. Um, I was born in hospitality, and I saw my parents working seven days a week, crazy hours, and I thought, you know, this is not a family life because we didn't have one. And, you know, in my time, generations back, uh, we were not meant to have a career. We would just, you know, go to school, uh, get a local job, and then maybe get married, have kids. And that's, when I look back to all my friends, that's what they do today. And I think I'm the only exception by being where I am today after eight countries. Yeah, fantastic. And and you mentioned that you moved 27 times. That's that's so important in this industry to get uh, to get that experience and move it to see different things. What's been the key highlight in your career over these years? Oh, there are a few. What I learned from the beginning, uh, I went to uh, the island of Jersey to have my well six months abroad summer job being away for the first time from the Netherlands. And I really liked it. I mean, I learned a lot of things from the English, also how to drink and how to party. <laughs> but You um, don't need to teach the Dutch that, do you? No, but it's just another view yeah, how yeah, to correct. party differently. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so I really liked it to be away because after six months I came home and I saw friends and they said, oh, where were you last week and I was I was gone for six months you know and I found out that they were still doing the same things going to the same places well just passing six months without doing really anything special and I thought wow that's really nice so I applied for a job in Brussels with the Hilton and I wanted to teach um, or to learn French because my French was non-existing so I worked there, and it was a very difficult job if you are in a surrounding where you don't know the language. But I think that's how you learn it very fast. 
And then I moved to the Sheraton in uh, Zaventem, across the airport. And from there, I moved to Mexico. And I could say probably dos cervezas a la playa, and that was about it. So I learned Spanish. What I really liked is being in a completely different new environment with a totally different culture than where I came from. And I thought I went over there to change, to, well, to change whole Mexico, but I found out that I had to adapt myself and then pass on what I knew by then. And I learned so much from all these people from Mexico, I went to France, from France, I went to Belgium, from Belgium, I went back to France, then we moved to Morocco, then we moved to Mauritius, then I came back to the Netherlands. So I was going away for six months and I came back 28 years later with, I met so many people and I met so many different situations where I learned as a person, but I learned, of course, also as um, working in the hospitality. So I think I would say meeting all these people, learning from them, and growing as a person by accepting that, you know, who am I to, to change somebody or a country? You know, I have to work on myself that I accept the people as they are. And I think that is probably the biggest lesson I have learned in all these years. Oh, lovely. And would you say you were a trailblazer, you know, a pioneer, the first female GM in some of these hotels? Would you consider yourself a trailblazer? Um, I think that's a very big word. And to be honest with you, I, I never thought about it until uh, the ladies in my in my team would mention it and then I thought about it and but for me it was I deserved it because I worked very hard but then I saw that it motivated the female persons in my team to grow so they could go to the next step because they saw it was possible yeah, yeah. and what can we do as an industry specifically on that what can we do as an to encourage women to consider a career in hospitality, especially general managers level? Do you think there are barriers we could help to remove? What should we be doing to encourage uh, uh, ladies, women to, to consider a career in this industry? Um, I think my difficult moment was when I had my son, uh, the organization around it, how to be a mom, how to be uh, somebody who works. Um, that, I think, was the most difficult part of the whole journey. Um, you know, I felt guilty when I was at home. I remember when I said to my general manager by then that I was pregnant. The first thing he said, like, oh, now I have to get organized. You know, I, I almost felt guilty. Well, I, I felt guilty. Mm. And you know, he didn't make that. He didn't make it easy for me. Uh, but I, you know, you got through it. So I think the understanding for the new moms, how to help them to get organized. You know, he would set up a meeting at seven in the evening, knowing that I couldn't be there. Or yeah, otherwise, that's, I not, had that's to... not. That's not good. I know, but yeah, you know, this is yeah. like twenty-two years ago. Yeah, correct. And uh, it was a whole different time. But I think understanding, um, let the ladies fill in their day and work around it so they feel good and at home and at work. So maybe they can come in later or leave earlier or do it things differently. And that should be, you know, normal and not that we have to ask because our child is sick, so we have to go home. Um, I think yeah, I agree with you. Where you I can think... help them the most. 
Yeah, I think there should be, I agree, you have to be a lot more flexible, understanding, and thank God, uh, uh, characters, and you have these in, in all industries, these characters, uh, like you were talking about, uh, you always have good and, and people who don't understand, and thank God that's changed, and it's it had to change, and it's right to change as well. Uh, but the good thing is you managed to do that, and you've done that, and your experiences from working around the world with people from different cultures and backgrounds, has, you know, that shapes like me. It shapes us as a person, as a leader. You, you learn from good, good things. You learn from bad things. What can be done better? And that shapes you a little bit. What have you brought from all of this worldly experience into your current role uh, at the at the very famous Inc in Amsterdam? And just for everybody listening, the Inc in Amsterdam, a truly fabulous hotel in the heart of Amsterdam. Uh, very trendy. Very very. Uh, uh, quite nice and definitely a place you need to come visit. And Yolanda will be there, of course, so it's even better. Of course. Yeah. I always am. <laughs> um, I think it shaped me into a true believer of diversity and inclusion. I mean, we are for the moment at 37 people working here, 18 our ladies, and out of 37, we have 26 different cultural backgrounds. And that's so rich about it. You, you have to learn from each other. You have to be open for each other. You have to respect each other. I don't mind who you love. I don't mind which color you have. Uh, just, I want to create a safe environment so people can be themselves and feel good so they can give a lot towards the guest and as you know um, this year will be the seventh time that we um, will have our pink hotel uh, for 10 days during the pride where we uh, put a P in front of ink on the facade where it says pink mm. and this is a statement that we believe in diversity and inclusion. Even in Amsterdam, where the world thinks that anything is possible, it's still somewhere is not. You know, um, the LGTB community still suffers from some people. And I believe if we, you know, we do an opening party, it's an unofficial opening party. We also have debates where people talk about the gender difficulties they have, uh, the things they experience, how can we change it? Because it's changing very fast. You know, you all have the the different the difference between uh, I don't know, the gays and the heteros, but it should be one. Why should, who are we to judge who you are? And this inclusion can make you so rich because you learn from each other. And what I said, you have to respect each other. You have to um, embrace it. That Absolutely. you can learn from it. You can Absolutely. learn from somebody else if you stay open for them. Yeah, absolutely correct. And, and, and you know, you, you build wonderful teams uh, when you do that, when you embrace, when you encourage, when you uh, are open-minded, you can build really, really, you know, diversity, cultural background. You make fabulous teams, which you did, Yolanda, shortly after becoming general manager at the Inc. Uh, your team was awarded the best management team in the Netherlands by the very prestigious Dutch or Hoika uh, Awards in 2016. What do you think... What would you say makes a great leader? What do you think makes a great leader in hospitality? Mm, besides the Dutch Hotel Awards, we also won the team, Bernache, in 2017. And I can only repeat what the jury said to us was that they felt when they, when they came, you have to do a presentation, you have to do a special event, and they... Uh, come by and there are six or eight people and they felt 
like it was one team. It's not one person. Nobody shines all by themselves. You know, we either shine as a team or we don't shine at all. And they could really feel that. And we included everybody, of course. And it's, you know, give them the credits as well. Sure. You know, I take the tomatoes, that's okay. But give the credits to your people. And, and that's what we say over here. We don't stop until we are proud. And that no. can be mentioned in very, very many ways. It doesn't need only for the LGTB, but for everybody. Just don't stop until you are proud of who you are or what you would like to do in your life. Right. What qualities or values are important for good leaders? I think there are two. You have to work on your know-how and pass it on. And you have to work on your know-how and pass it on. I think the French can say this very nicely in uh, savoir-faire and savoir-être. And if you pass that on and you spend a lot of time with your people on the floor, because I don't have an office, I work either in the restaurant, I sit at the bar, but I work. Um, so I can be on the floor. That's so you learned in Jersey, right? Uh, working at the bar. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I learned it, so I have to practice it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's what I do. So I don't like sitting in offices because that takes me away from where it's really happening. And you're much more accessible. You know, you don't need a meeting. You don't need an appointment. You just ask a question and we go on. So yeah. I think uh, I would say you know how and you know how. Who has inspired you in your career the most? Wow. <gasps> I, um, I think I would I don't have a person. You know, I had very good general managers, very, very good people who believed in me and made me grow. But I think the most inspiration I get from the people around me. But that can also be at home. It can also be with my family. Somehow, something always inspires me because I can get something out of it. But I can't name a person. I don't know. Hmm. I think I would say the teams, the people. The what people would you okay? Me. What would you say to somebody who's considering? Entering the hospitality as a career, what would you tell them? Oh, I would say go for it. I would absolutely say go for it. Because there's so many different jobs in a hotel or in the hospitality. Most of the people think only of the front positions. But we also have a lot of positions in the back. You know, you can be HR, maintenance, finance, sales reservations, but you can also be the procurement person. So it's not only the waiting staff or the cleaning staff or the front office people. It's also many different, and you can learn from so many different jobs all in one place. Yeah. What do we need to do to make this attractive to the younger generation coming in there? Because, Yolanda, you know it's very difficult to attract not, uh, not, in, not only in Holland, but worldwide, to attract people to come in this industry. What do we need to do to attract the younger generation coming into hospitality? Hmm. If I look at the, the generation of today, they are very into the balance of their private life and their professional life. You know, in my generation, we worked until we finished or... 12 hours were done or 14 hours were done. Today, they look like having both, having time to do their um, personal things and, and travel. They're, like, they're not into long hours. And I think if you are fair, honest, you can always find a way to make it happen that they have both sides. Yeah. yeah. 
it's a challenge, of course, if you have a, a hotel that's open, you know, 24 hours, and you pick, but you look at the potential of people and see what you can get out of it and, and make them understand that they can grow so much if they invest in themselves. And trainings, we should, you know, put all the efforts and all the time we have into the people so they grow and they learn. I think that's that's one of the sides and, and see how we can um, see how we can schedule and be you know different than only five days a week maybe it's four days a week and then we have one more person to fill it up yeah and we also need to we also need to this industry has like you mentioned and i agree entirely this industry is long hours uh, one of the lowest pays uh, per industry and that and that needs to change as well i was speaking to some some younger uh, people entering the hotel business, and I said, well, why did you choose this hotel? And they said, because we get a schedule. We get our schedule for one month. We know for the whole month when I'm working, when I'm off, uh, and I can plan things. And, and uh, a lot of the other hotels tell you that weekly. And so it's just simple things, exactly what you mentioned, that can make a, a huge, huge difference. And, and I think this, this, this hospitality is very important because we all join it because we were surrounded by people uh, who had big hearts and, and looked after us and, and we grew with them and, and, and drove forward. And that's why actually uh, we wanted to do this podcast and I was very excited to do this podcast to, to let people try to get in, show the heart of this uh, industry of this hospitality and why the people that make it are so special. What, what do you think, for you, what makes this industry so special? Because I really like what I do. Simple that sounds a bit cliche, but I really do like what I do. We work with people, for people. Um, the, the contact you have with your people on the floor, with your guests, it's every day is different. And now I, I understand that it sounds very cliche, but it truly is. You have so many nice conversations, but you learn also to react very fast in solutions, and you learn how to look for opportunities instead of looking for what you can't. And we saw this during these last two years, we always looked for opportunities, and that gives a boost that motivates the people. If you're not a people manage manager, then you know there are loads of other jobs you can do in the hospitality. But if you generally interested in people, then that's what I like. Yeah. I think otherwise I would have <clears throat> maybe worked for I don't know Microsoft or and close the computer at six and then go home. Scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rock, you close it and that was it. <coughs> but you can't. You can't. So that's what I like. I honestly, I'm always interested. I know everybody. I know what I need to know from everybody. So you have not always professional conversations, but also to find out how people are. Are they feeling good? Especially the last two years was a bit difficult because if you have like 26 people coming from other countries, you know, they couldn't go home. So your role as a GM changed as well. It, it became always much, changes, yeah. It became so much more... Um, they needed a rock. They needed to hold on to somebody... And uh, that's what all the gems became. Correct. Listen, in one sentence, <gasps> in one sentence, sum up this industry. I think I would repeat myself that we are working with people for people. I wanted to call it humans, but that I don't think it's a real 
nice word, um, and that you learn to to work on your know how and you know how, and that's what shapes you. To, well, it shaped me to the person I am today, and if I still like it after forty four years, then something went right. <laughs> Something I must have really liked it. Yeah, and absolutely. I honestly, did. Yeah, it's fantastic. I honestly did. You can travel. You can, you know, hospitality is all over the world. You don't like it, maybe where you live, then look for another place and travel. And I worked in eight countries. I traveled through twenty-seven, I think. Oh, I mean, you can find a job in the hospitality all over the world. You can learn the languages, <clears throat> interest yourself in people, and you can travel your whole life in hospitality. How nice is that? You can indeed. Listen, Yolanda, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Um, and I know you're going to, when you, when you do listen back as you started up, uh, how you sound, you're going to see this was absolutely fabulous. Uh, uh, and I really. Thank you. Wanted to thank you for taking your time. I always end with a couple of questions, uh, which are called quick fire questions. Some of them you, some of them you probably know, and then the rest will make up as we go along. Just to to end this in the tradition I have, give me one person anywhere in the world you would like to meet. Oh, um, cool. My dad. Your favorite country to visit. Oh, there are so many. There are so many. I couldn't pick one. But I maybe you should all come to the Netherlands because we have a very, very beautiful country. Your favorite food? Oh, I think Mexican. Your favorite fruit? What's your favorite fruit? I think an orange. It has a lot of vitamins and you can find it all over the world. Okay. What about favorite fast food? Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I would have said that as well. I would have said that as well. Listen, Yolanda, thanks very much for everything. Um, and I look forward to coming to see you. I hope to be in Holland in the middle of February, I think, or the end of February. I look forward to coming oh, to good. see you. Um, Come and stay. I will indeed. Thank you very much for everything. Take care, and we'll speak very, very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Heart of Hospitality was hosted by Duncan O'Rourke, CEO of Accor Northern Europe. To find out more about the people that make this sector so special, visit our website and find us on Instagram. Instagram.